Emails that have been shared with CNN by the Texas Department of Public Safety have detailed concerns that a trooper medic had shared with their supervisor about the way that migrants are being treated along the border in Eagle Pass, Texas. And this is about as bad as you can imagine what the sort of standard operating procedures are, how they treat people desperately trying to get into the United States. The trooper wrote in one of the emails that they quote, were given orders to push the people back into the water to go to Mexico, and we're also ordered not to give water to the migrants. So if somebody makes it across the river, you literally push them into the water where people routinely drown. You push the adults, you push the kids, and if they make it far enough away from the river, and perhaps during this apocalyptic heat wave that we're experiencing, if they need water, you don't give it to them, and if they die, they die. Now these are very serious charges that are being made from a literal insider. So you would think the government there is gonna take this very seriously. Well, here's what a spokesperson for Governor Abbott said in response. Texas is deploying every tool and strategy to deter and repel illegal crossings between ports of entry as President Biden's dangerous open border policies entice migrants from over 150 countries to risk their lives entering the country illegally. The absence of razor wire and other deterrent strategies encourages migrants to make unsafe and illegal crossings between ports of entry while making the job of Texas National Guard soldiers and DPS troopers more dangerous and difficult. President Biden has unleashed a chaos on the border that's unsustainable and we have a constitutional duty to respond to this unprecedented crisis. Hey, wait, there's nothing there about the fact that they're advising their troopers to kill people. That's weird, I feel like that's the part that I would respond to. No, um, instead, it's uh, there wasn't razor wire to cut people. There weren't um, buoys in the water to make people drown. Don't worry, we've fixed that, that's the benefit. And that's not chaos, by the way. The chaos was that President Biden has open border policies, which is of course a joke. They continued many of the same policies from Donald Trump on the border. And because of his open border policies, people are trying to cross the border, something that had never happened before. Before President Biden became president, that wasn't a thing. It certainly didn't happen while Trump was president. So all of this can be put on him. And if either informally or formally, we're telling our troopers to kill people at the border, we don't even feel the need to dignify that with a specific response. We're just gonna cut a campaign ad against President Biden and then move on with our lives. Well, this does have a human cost. We're gonna detail some of that human cost in a moment, but. Michael, what do you think about this? Well, you know, the, the, in the in the first graphic you showed, you there was they say just following orders. We were given orders. We were given orders. Where have we heard just following orders before? Yeah. It's again, it's a, it's a, it's history repeating itself. People using that as an excuse. Well, you just followed the orders, but you were following orders to do something that was so cruel and inhumane uh, and potentially murderous uh, that that you cannot use that ever as an excuse. The other side of that coin is the open borders thing. If there were open open borders, there wouldn't be people trying to get into the country. They would be walking into the country. There wouldn't be a line of humanity across the southern border of the United States in some places in the northern border of the United States being pushed back by our laws and processes here. And so I think that that's, you know, the, the people need to really call it out when someone says open borders because open borders is not something that they have in the United States. But Greg Abbott can talk about it in Texas and then someone who I speak to in South Carolina can tell me that we have open borders and Biden has open borders when in fact it is a mimeograph. It is an absolute carbon copy of what the Trump administration is doing. Exactly. Well, look, there's a lot that they could have talked about in their response from Governor Abbott. Um, to be fair, he's probably busy with the heat wave that he's also doing nothing to stop from happening. The heat wave that nobody could have predicted because there haven't been intense periods of both heat in the summer and cold in the winter that Texas desperately needs to do something about that results in people dying all the time in Texas. Uh, nobody could have seen it coming, so he's probably busy with that. Anyway, in a one seven hour period late last month, according to the email, two medics from the State Department of Public Safety said that they treated a four year old girl who passed out in 100 degree heat after Texas National Guard personnel pushed the group she was in back towards Mexico. So a four year old girl nearly died of heat exposure because they just said go, we don't want you here. 
A man with a significant laceration on his leg suffered when he tried to rescue his child from razor wire placed on a deterrence buoy in the Rio Grande. That's the razor wire that they were so proud of in the official statement from Governor Abbott's office. A 15 year old boy with a broken leg suffered when he tried to cross a more dangerous part of the river away from the buoys. And a 19 year old woman trapped in razor wire having a miscarriage. All of this being pushed and encouraged by people who will tell you that they are just following their like strongly held religious beliefs. This is the world we need to have. All of these people desperately trying to get into the United States deserve heat stroke and lacerations, miscarriages caused by trauma, drownings, broken limbs, all of that is acceptable and needs to be continued. But tell us more about how you're trying to protect the children. And by the way, like I know that there is no chance that a single one of these conservatives is ever going to spend a nanosecond thinking about what is actually in the mind of a migrant who's trying to cross over. Like what would have to be true of the life that is awaiting you were you to be turned back south? That you would be willing to suffer these things, knowing that this is what happens, that people drown, that people die of the heat, and you still are willing to do it. Maybe a little bit of empathy, maybe just a brief moment to think about what that is like and what we can potentially do to help these people. People with the tenacity and the drive to cross all of these obstacles maybe could contribute in a positive way towards our country. But no, there's no thought, there's no compassion, just throw them back into the river. And maybe if Trump becomes president, we can stock it with crocodiles. That was an actual plan that they discussed. Michael, any other thoughts? I mean, there's not much to say about that. That is something that they did discuss, that there were people suggesting crocodiles be put in there. I mean, it, this, is, um, this is these are medieval times and, um, and this is not how you treat people. It's not to say that we don't have flaws on our border, but they're not as uh, egregious as many people say. We do have processes by which people apply for asylum in this country. And to to again, villainize those people right from the get go um, is is inhuman. And, uh, yeah. and, and, yeah, and that, that's what, what Greg Abbott has sort of ushered in for quite a while. There were other governors of Texas who were not, who did not take this tack, but this is what the trickle down from Donald Trump is. Yeah, by the way, last year, 748 people that we know of died crossing the US-Mexico border. That is a massive, like almost unimaginable tragedy. But I realize as I say that, why am I even saying this? Like that that's going to persuade someone to change their mind about this policy? Like, well, I don't want hundreds more people to die, so I guess we should do something. We're way past that point. We all know that we lived through the pandemic. We all know that what, 100 million people were encouraged to and became perfectly comfortable with hundreds of thousands of people needlessly dying so that you don't have to wear a mask or whatever. You don't have to maintain social distance, you don't have to stay home. If we have to construct a literal mountain of needless corpses, well, that's liberty, baby. Once you've accepted that, what's 748 migrants dying? They literally will not even hear that fact on Fox News or on any of these sites. So I guess we'll just move on with our day. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.